Welcome back. So I spoke with Justin yesterday and we went over how we were going to approach this first flight and uh, he suggested that you know we just go ahead and continue to do what I was doing initially with respect to taking the aircraft down the runway um, you know just a little bit quicker each time and then um, bringing the nose off and you know just getting up to a point where the nose is held off and then you know eventually we'll get to a point where the main wings uh, will come off and provided we can do that without uh, running out of runway and again if we do it progressively it'll be safe and then we can get a really good feeling of uh, how the aircraft is balanced and everything uh, before launching off onto what be you know a, a, a you know complete full first flight so uh, what I'm doing here is um, I'm actually going to weigh the nose weight on the aircraft when the wings are supporting the rear weight as opposed to the main gear because uh, the main gear is quite a bit forward of the center of lift of the wings and so if you just measure the weight on the nose gear you get a much uh, lower number uh, when it's sitting on the main gear than you do when it's suspended by the wings and the reason why we want to know this is so we can look at Mark's calculations that he has done a while ago, which I showed you a couple of videos ago. And we can look at um, a, an airspeed that we want to choose. Um, and we can look at an angle of attack, an initial angle of attack to bring the nose to. Um, and then use his numbers and use these numbers of you know, what the weights are in order to figure out exactly where we're going to be uh, when the main or when the nose lifts off and also when the main wings lift off and we'll look at Mark's numbers again here shortly uh, but in the meantime so what I've done here is I've basically taken one of the scales and I've got the little remote um, display there in my hands so I've put the scale underneath that nose wheel and now I'm just disconnect disconnecting the tug there so it doesn't um, you know create any uh, false reading there on the nose wheel for the weight and the nose wheel is pretty much in line with um, the foreplane there it's not quite in line with the center of lift it's a little bit aft of that the center of lift of the foreplane but it's close enough for what we're doing here and uh, those bags there those are the 50 pound um, weights that we're going to use there in the nose just so we have a really good forward CG uh, initially and I don't know how well you would be able to see this um, but yeah, that's just sitting on the main gear. That's 389 pounds there on the front. Um, so now I'm going to jack up the wings here and put uh, blocks there under the wing so there's no weight on that main gear and do the same on both sides. And then uh, we'll be able to see what the difference is weight, uh, weight is there on the nose. And then ultimately I'm going to get on board and uh, take a measurement with me on board because that's pretty much what it's going to be like uh, with Justin on board there and then we'll take those numbers that we have there we know what the gross weight is um, of the aircraft you know with um, with Justin on board and the fuel that we're going to have on board it's going to be about 3,500 and something pounds um, it doesn't really matter you know that accurately at this point because Mark's uh, numbers there are you know um, calculations but there are ranges so 3,000 saying we have 3,500 is pretty much as good as saying we have 3,550 uh, so we'll, we'll look and see what the nose gear weight is and we'll subtract um, that from the 3,000 say 550 and then from there we'll know exactly uh, how much weight is being carried uh, by the wings and ultimately we're going to be shooting I think initially for three degree nose up uh, rotation and we're going to get Justin to sort of practice that by uh, jacking the aircraft up in the nose so he can he can get a you know an idea of the sight picture of how that's going to look you know because not having a uh, long cowling on the nose it's, it can be difficult in a uh, canard aircraft like this to sort of eyeball that sight picture so we want him to have some sort of reference point before he starts blasting down the runway trying to do this because uh, remember when I got the nose off there it came up um, more than three degrees I think it ended up being about five degrees nose up and you know I immediately sort of put it back down 
and you know and everybody keeps asking me this again and again and it doesn't matter how many times I tell everybody because not everyone sees the videos um, but the clearance on the prop there when it's just sitting level on the ground is 11 and 3 quarter inches the distance from the prop to where the main gear sits on the ground is uh, 72 inches and the distance from where the main gear sits on the ground to where the nose gear sits on the ground is 105 inches so if you do the math and you take the uh, well let's just say the prop is going to hit the ground that would mean uh, that that 11 and a half well sorry 11 and three quarter inches has basically gone down to zero so if you take that 11 and three quarter inches and you divide that by 72 which is the distance to the main gear where it's pivoting and then you multiply it back out by 105 you end up getting uh, just over 17 inches so 17.13 inches which is basically how, how high the nose gear would be off or the yeah the nose wheel would be off the ground uh, in the front before the prop is going to hit the ground um, and it's quite high and then when I actually took it off the ground or took the nose off that one time I believe it, I think I just did a estimate measurement from the video and I think I had it about nine inches off the ground something like that uh, but then again if you go for uh, what we're going to be shooting for here so initially a three degrees nose up attitude to get the aircraft airborne um, you know you end up with um, a much uh, lower number in terms of how much the gears off the ground uh, there you can see this is with me sitting on board there 11 24 pounds on the nose gear when it's suspended by the main wings so that's our key number that we're going to be working with there and uh, you know you can see there I also um, you know took a number there as well just to see uh, what it was and then 1023 when I'm not sitting on board that really doesn't is not really useful because there's going to be someone sitting on board when it's going unless we were going to go and <laughs> operate it remote remotely or something like that uh, anyway so the next thing I did there is just quickly take out the weights there and again just go and measure it so 396 again there uh, now that's sitting on the main gear and then uh, you know I jump back on board again just to see how it is um, you know in comparison when all the weight is sitting on the main gear and the nose gear uh, when compared with um, sitting on the wings so basically 489 490 so you end up with a lot more weight transferring there when it goes onto the wings it goes from 490 to 1120 so basically has to absorb 700 more pounds of weight as it starts to get light on the main gear and then you know ultimately get uh, airborne all right so we're back looking at uh, Mark's numbers here and before I sort of go into this as I was saying before we're going to shoot for about three degrees uh, nose up attitude initially to get the airplane airborne uh, so if you take three degrees and you do the math on that basically just taking uh, the sine of, of um, three degrees and then multiplying that by 105 inches you end up with about 5.49 uh, inches so that's how high the nose wheel will be off the ground so plenty of prop clearance uh, still and that's not too far to bring it up and it's not like a crazy sight picture or anything like that so it should be fairly comfortable um, for Justin to do that and as I said that's less than what I had it off the ground when when I took it off that one time um, so anyway so here's um, Mark's numbers again so just we're, we're gonna pick this line the plane now for three degrees and so he went and did all the calcs and stuff for the CLs and everything like that so he's got the wing alpha here um, which is starts out at it's three degrees positive um, just when it's sitting on the ground and the uh, four plane or canard is five and a half degrees I think it's actually a little bit more than that but he's using the numbers that we measured there so five and a half degrees and then he's taken the CLs there and he has the the main wing CL here which is the coefficient of lift and then he also has the the canard or the four plane that's the max elevator uh, coefficient of lift so the maximum lift that it can generate with the elevator fully deflected downwards and nose up and then he's also got the the CL here for when the elevator is in the neutral position so we're going to be using the three degree uh, line here so if we look at what the CLs are here um, when it's a maximum uh, elevator deflection it's 1.89 and 
when there's uh, no elevator it's 0.93 so it's basically about half the amount of lift uh, when the elevator is neutral to when it's uh, fully deflected at least that's based upon his calculations so and then over here these are all diff these different groupings here are uh, basically groupings for uh, any a given uh, airspeed and they're the airspeeds up here in miles per hour so we're going to be shooting for 85 knots which is basically about 97 miles an hour so again if we take our little three degree line here and we go down to the very last one here this is 97 miles an hour what we get here these three um, columns here again this is the um, the first one is the uh, lift from the foreplane with the elevate elevator fully deflected um, for nose up and the second column is the lift generated by the main wing at that angle of attack and then the third column here is the total amount of lift from those two so uh, with our number that we measured on the nose gear there we had uh, 1120 pounds or so and we said that the uh, maximum gross weight of the aircraft is going to be about 3550 so that leaves us with um, 2000 430 pounds that we need to get off the ground and if you see here this 2558 that's 100 pounds more than what we need there to get off the ground so basically at that speed and at that angle of attack there's enough lift being generated by the main wing uh, to get the aircraft off the ground and in terms of how much lift is on the foreplane there that's with full deflection there'd be 1824 pounds and now that's way more than we need we only need 1100 pounds so that basically you can if you dial in the fact that um, the CL on the elevator or on the foreplane is basically about half when the elevator is neutral we could say at the neutral point we'd end up with about 912 pounds of lift and fully deflected we'd have 1824 pounds so we only need 1120 pounds so just extrapolating there with about 25% uh, of the maximum available lift from the elevator there uh, we should have enough to hold the nose off the ground there and it'll take you know less than that even just to bring it up because it's so so light when it's sitting on the main gear but as it rotates and the get starts to get light on the main gear and the weight transfers onto the wing um, a lot more weight gets loaded up onto the foreplane, uh, onto the canard. So anyway, those two numbers there is where we're going to basically pick this to work because uh, you know that basically works. We have enough lift on the main wing to get off the ground. We basically have an extra hundred pounds than what we need, and um, there's definitely enough lift with the with the canard or the foreplane to lift the um, the nose up and hold it up. There, so we're going to be shooting for that 85 knots, which is 97 miles an hour and three degrees nose up. And then, of course, you know, once it's airborne like that, then obviously, you know, you're just going to climb out there with whatever's comfortable. And we'll probably, um, you know, looking back at this rate of climb chart that Mark did here as well, this is the one with a thousand pounds of static thrust here. Uh, we're probably just going to accelerate this to, you know, 130 miles an hour, which would be, you know, around about 115. Uh, knots and we should be climbing at uh, at least 1400 feet a minute if this is correct because this is based upon a 3800 pound uh, gross weight here so and we're going to be you know 250 pounds less than that so we should be able to um, achieve 1400 feet a minute and so it won't take long to get up to Patton altitude there so anyway uh, that's a little bit of uh, more maths and calculations for you and uh, Thanks again for watching, and if you have any comments, leave them below, and I'll see if I can answer them for you, and uh, we'll see you on the next one.